Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Office Bloke Daz. Office Bloke Aiden. Here we are, Office Bloke Daz, and just the two of us, Aiden. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Aiden's on holiday, yeah. uh, I'm flying out today to go meet her. You'll be joining so, her in about a couple hours, mate. I will, that's right, off to, off to sunny Portugal. So, yeah, have a good time. It's not very sunny here at the moment, so it'd be nice to, uh, oh, to head yeah. off into the, uh, into the continent and uh, enjoy a bit of a uh, Portuguese beer, a bit of Super Boss. Super and, um, Bob, yeah. And also, um, what's the other one? Um, Sagres. Sagres is good. Yeah, so I'll have a bit of that and... Uh, That'll be my week done. Yeah. Yeah, plenty of that. Um, American in the UK, 15 British culture shocks. This will be interesting to yeah. see. What is something that like other people are quite surprised about when they come to the UK? I couldn't really think, to be honest. Because obviously think. when you live here, everything seems like it'll be normal yeah. to everyone else. It does. I'm trying to think that you, as a foreigner, if you come here, what you would be culture shocked with. Um, there's obviously a big, there's, there's a big bar culture. But I think that's like not shouldn't but that's be a global. shock to everyone. Shouldn't be a shock. The bar cultures are pretty much global. Pub you know, culture. Pub culture. Yeah. That's, that's something that. No I don't think you're only gonna be shocked, shocked about that. Yeah, culture exactly. shock. Um, the weather could be one. Could be a bit yeah. of a culture. It rains a lot. We do get a Especially lot of rain. When you come up north. Yeah, yeah, we do get a lot of rain. So I don't know. But yeah, I can't. Maybe the the history as well could be a bit of a culture shock. Cause there's a lot of history here. Some really really big history. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. that the foods are actually quite nice. That could be a culture <laughs> shock. The food is quite nice. Yeah, there's no English restaurants. Yeah, <laughs> English food there all the time. But what restaurants? I've never seen an English restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's find out. Let's American in the UK, fifteen British culture shocks. I love the UK, but there's definitely some things that shocked me when I got here. And probably the first one is how much nature there is. You know, mm. when you think of going to the UK, a lot of us tourists That's true, think yeah, about going nature. to London, but really the UK is so much more. And being here in Northern England, I am just Ooh. shocked by the number of- Northern She's in the England. North. That's She's nice. in the best part of England. That's, yeah, that's a good start, no, first and of all. When, when you think about the North, no, thing, I mean- There's a lot more nature as well, really. There is, we've got, we got quite a few national parks up in the North. We've got some down in the South as well, yeah. but, you know, the Cotswolds, places like, it's quite a big uh, national park. The Lake park. Districts and the Peak, <laughs> the Peak the Districts, ones, yeah. You've got like Yorkshire down. Dales, mm. and you've got quite a lot. The uh, Lake District's probably one of the biggest, isn't it, I think? Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's making a good good impression of on me coming to the north. I want to know where in the north though. Sack London off for sure. If ever you come to the UK, get up north. Yeah, miles better. Hundred percent. Parks and cycling Press routes Press Press and Forest Park. nature that there is everywhere, even in a big city That's like Manchester. Manchester. But unfortunately, with that comes some allergies, and it seems like I've gotten allergies for the first time in my life. No, so many people here have hay fever and stuff like that, though. Do, you're it's, right. It's insane. I, I'm I'm all right for allergies. Like I never get allergies or anything. I've never had them until about a year ago. Really? And then I, all of a sudden, I started getting all like bunged up, and my eyes were all like dry, and I was like. Going, oh, I must have a cold and someone went, no, the pollen's high today. Yeah, He's probably yeah. got allergies. Yeah, I'm like, never even knew so what that was. So many people over here have allergies and stuff mm. from pollen. Yeah, we've got fairies, in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> being here in the spring, and I guess it's hay fever because a lot of my friends have it as well. And from what they've said, it's caused a lot by these yellow rapeseed oil flowers that are in bloom everywhere. So yeah, I've been having like, all the symptoms, I'm sure you know what they are if you had them too, like itchy, watery eyes and sneezing and stuffy nose and stuff like that. So I've been suffering a little bit from that <laughs> that I didn't expect, but fortunately the medicine here is really cheap and like you can get allergy medicine over the counter for like 50 cents or 50p or one pound or something. <laughs> something that I'm <laughs> still adjusting to is how friendly the people are here in Northern England. It's genuinely shocked. It's not the same in the South. It isn't, you're right. If you, if you go, if you're around here, if you, you can stop anyone on the street here, up in the North, and go, hi, how are you? And if, they hear an, if they hear any accent, and they'll go, oh, I'm fine, whereabouts are you from? And they'll have a conversation with you. Yeah. If you're in the South and you go, hi, they just go, hmm, mumble. And it's like, yeah. it's the equivalent of going somewhere, I don't know, in, if, you, if you're looking from an American perspective, you try and do that in New York City, and you just get proper like, what's it? If you do it in a small little sort of like town somewhere, mm. you'll probably get more of a reception. Yeah, yeah after two months of being here I still haven't fully adapted to this aspect like I'm still caught off guard when strangers just say hiya or the guy at the flower shop is like hello love like as if he knows me and it just kind of permeates every level of society from just people walking down the street or out in the forest to the people working at the airport uh, people in shops, restaurants, and even new friends that you make. 
I've been just so blown away by how kind and generous the people are. Like people who I've only known for a couple days or a couple weeks and they're like offering to pick me up at the train station or take me to the airport or help me with stuff with with my career and hobbies and mentor me in music production and like when's the last time that one of your friends offered to take you to the airport right like it doesn't happen they just be like get an uber but here it's people are like like what can i do to help you or do you want to come to this house party do you want to meet my friends do you want me to introduce you to these people and don't say it's just because i'm a girl <laughs> like it's it's everyone and just the other day i was um, having drinks with my friends, my friends that I've known for like two weeks. And one of the guys that was there named Mark, he was really cool. And he left and my other friend was like, oh no, like Mark's leaving. And he had just met him the day before and they are two British guys and they had bonded in one day and had become the best of friends. And like other guys that I've met that have been friends for two weeks, like everyone treats each other the same, whether you've known them for two weeks or two months or 20 years. The other day I was just walking through this neighborhood called Ancoats and... <laughs> it is right in the center of Manchester. Manchester. Ancoats, I can, give you, I can give you a lot of history about Ancoats. Yeah. I went on a history tour there the other day. Really? Funny, yeah. And um, it used to be, Ancoats used to be the worst part of the world. It was it's proper transforming proper, though. It was a proper biggest shit pit you could think of. Yeah. I mean, it made Detroit look like Beverly Hills. Right? <laughs> <laughs> made Gary, Indiana look like, <laughs> look like Los Angeles. <laughs> no, it, it, it was one of them, but it's, 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 now it's the trendiest place to live in the UK. It's, it's on the rise, isn't it? It's one of the trendiest places to live in the UK, if not the trendiest. I didn't know that. Yeah, I always thought it was a little bit like still. Do you know the funny thing is they took us down this one part of Ancoats and they were saying like um, this is something square and they were like the Halley Orchestra was there and I was like oh my god I've never been here before. I used to play with the Halley Orchestra you know and I'm sat there and I'm like going how come I've never been here before? I'm looking around and I'm like wow this is amazing that and then I turned around Jimmy's bar was there and went oh I went in there with Aiden the other day yeah. <laughs> and, sort of, and, and then next door was the, the Seven Brothers and I went, and I went yeah, in there yeah. I said, and across the road was that disorder where I remember mm. we went in we didn't get served for ages so we left but we gave, the, ended up giving that guy's phone, phone back. back yeah <laughs> that's right yeah and it was there and I went oh I have been here before and they went how do you not know you how have you missed this I went I must have just got out of a taxi or walked through did yeah. we walk or get a taxi I feel like we walked. Oh, we got a taxi because yeah. I found the phone in the taxi. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, the taxi yeah. must have just dropped us off, not paying yeah. attention yeah. to anything. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I said, I was here with you. But Ancoats is mint now. Yeah. People were just waving to each other, smiling like security guards, people sitting at tables. And I ended up in this 15 minute conversation with a woman who was just standing outside of a restaurant. And that just, that kind of stuff just doesn't happen where I'm from. Coming here to this park, some guy passed me on his bike and he's like, oh, sorry. People apologize for even passing you on the sidewalk. So it's <laughs> kind of funny, but I, I really like it. I have noticed, however, that people are also really blunt. <laughs> this is most noticeable in restaurants, actually. I, I can't tell you how many people I've heard send stuff back to the kitchen <laughs> because it wasn't right. The eggs are too cold. The bread wasn't toasted enough. So that annoys me a lot, by Does the way. I me. Can't, if, my, if my food's not good enough for just me, if I don't it. like it, I just leave it. Same, yeah, just I leave it. Don't say just it. sending it back. I don't just trust, leave it. I wouldn't trust it if I send it back. That's exactly why I don't send it back. Yeah. Whatever. But it's not like they're complaining. It's just that they're being very assertive. And whereas people do that in the United States as well, I think we're more likely to just kind of suck it up and be like, oh, this isn't what I ordered, but I'll just eat it anyway. Or everyone else has their food, so you don't want to send it back. Mm. But here, no, people are like, this is wrong. Take it back. So they do like to joke as well and kind of like give you a hard time, especially me, because I don't know what they're saying half the time <laughs> with all of the slang. So if people do that to you, yeah. then don't take it personally. Coach, not not I'm also shocked at how safe I feel here. It isn't something that I really thought much about before I left the U.S., but now that I'm here, like, I really just feel so safe. Like, not only are there no wild animals out to get you, but you don't have to worry about guns. And even being out in parks and trails by yourself, that can be very dangerous in the U.S., and I would never feel comfortable hiking by myself there, but here I do. And um, people say, like, in my neighborhood, they're like, you don't have to lock your door here. And that's 
Definitely not the case in Florida. Mm. So I'm not that sure has been. That. I want to know who the person um, who said uh, that was. I probably asked where she lives that. after. I wouldn't trust that as well. And there's a massive knife culture around that area yeah, where she is yeah, as well. Yeah. So I'd be careful. I wouldn't say that with her. I wouldn't say wouldn't lock your door. Jeez, no, no, no chance. The doors 100 percent get locked. And the cars. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's we a... walk past the neighbors around there. You, you'll see like massive. Uh, yeah. Locks on your steering wheels. Yeah, correct. It's. Uh, the safety aspect, yeah, is quite safe as far as like not there's not that many guns, not not like there is in the USA. Yeah. Um, but there are, you know, there's, there's Ancoats and surrounding areas of Ancoats have some pretty it's dangerous. It's one of the areas. most dangerous places in the UK. Yeah, it's uh, there's, there's definitely parts where you'd think. But Greater Manchester, the county of Greater Manchester, is number two of most dangerous places in the UK. Probably, yeah. Sure. But it, I like mean, behind like West Yorkshire or something. But it's a big ass county when you're taking the whole of Greater Manchester. She's just talking around press. I mean, press, which is one of the most elite. Yeah, areas yeah, in yeah, Manchester yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. She's in there. That's she's true. in that area, and so is Ancos. Is now. I mean, try and get somewhere in Ancos. It's anywhere half decent. It's mm. like uh, I don't know for, for your money you've got, you won't find much. Mm. Um, but it's uh, but yeah, the, <laughs> the safety aspect. Yeah, if you especially in the northern quarter, you got the northern quarter on one side that leads right into the centre, but you go down Oldham Street from Ancoats and you get straight into Piccadilly Gardens. Yeah, go that I, way. I wouldn't say it's the. I wouldn't say she's making <laughs> yeah. it seem a lot safer. I think. Go down Piccadilly Gardens and see what yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And shocking in the best way. All right, and we got to talk about the food, you guys, because I am still shocked at how good the food tastes here. I'd just been back in the U.S. for a few months and was kind of just getting used to the tasteless, bland food and the kind of not ripe fruits and vegetables. And then coming here, everything just tastes so much better. I found out that the UK is among the top 10 countries in the world with the highest food quality standards. So that's definitely a good thing, but that. on the flip side, the food also goes bad really fast, which means it's fresher, which means it probably has less preservatives, probably less modification. I've noticed that the sell-by dates and the consume-by dates are a lot shorter than they are in the U.S. Fruits and vegetables go bad within a couple days, whereas in the U.S. you can get away with shopping like once a week and the chicken goes bad really fast. Like one or two days, you better cook whatever yeah. chicken or meat that you bought. And I actually read that in the U.K. it's um, not allowed to spray the chicken with chlorine, which is allegedly an acceptable practice in the U.S., so that might have something what? to do with it. The first day I bought chicken and I didn't cook like it. Like as in the stuff you put in swimming pools? <laughs> chlorine, the, the, the chemical. <laughs> the Just wash it in the, in the swimming pool first. <laughs> put chlorine tablets on it. But the um, no, they were trying. It was a big thing about banning uh, American imports, wasn't it? Because of the chlorinated chicken. I didn't know that. Yeah, because it's. I think it's. I think it's preserved. It lasts longer, doesn't it? Oh, is that what chicken it over it? Like it's like she says. It only. Yeah, you're gonna get off day, really. Everything day goes off really quick. Yeah, I mean, get a loaf of bread and it's completely gone within three, four days. Yeah, it'd be less than that. It's, it's, you look at like um, same with milk, but we've got a new milk one that's actually last last longer, longer now. Yeah, yeah, it yeah the pasteurized sort of style, like the yellow cap. Yeah, 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 correct. But she's she's right in what she's saying. A lot of stuff. The food the food is very fresh. It is, and yeah. it does go off very quick. But we we shop daily over here. Yeah. As opposed, we st it's one of them where you just stop on the way home, don't know, or on the way whatever wherever you need you for do, that night. For, for whatever you need for that day, yeah. You just shop for that day. Mm. Weekly shops are becoming a thing of the past unless you're buying tin foods and frozen foods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want fresh foods, it's daily. Mm. Mm. It for two days, and it was already starting to look off. I also read that they treat their animals a lot better here with more <laughs> compassion compared to the factory farming in the US. So that is a really good thing. And I've also noticed that even though the Brits liked their baked goods, that the food doesn't taste as sweet. And that could be because of the recent sugar tax. But then on the other hand, which is weird, I've noticed a lot of foods have fake sugar, like artificial sweeteners in them, which is not so good. So I'm not really sure what the story is there. It's even hard to find sparkling water that doesn't have artificial sweeteners and flavorings in it. So maybe they cut back on real sugar and started using fake sugar. I don't know. They also have American style pancakes in plastic wrap, which is really sacrilegious. Pancakes should be made fresh, but you can find them in the bread section and also Stop in the refrigerated the section. But I have not been I've definitely seen daring them enough before, to try them yet. Speaking of food, another thing that really surprised me was seeing so many couples together shopping in the grocery store. You wouldn't think that that would be <laughs> Not weird. me. That's the last thing I want to do. That's <laughs> not the me. Me, the me. The men will run like a spare wheel. You wait outside, mate. <laughs> I don't even go in. 
I'll wait in the car. <laughs> I'll wait in the car. <laughs> but it's like men walk around. I see men walking around the uh, the supermarket with the wives or the girlfriends or whatever, the partners. And they just look like a spare wheel. They just have no idea what they're No, I'm that guy. I'm, I'm here to carry the bags. Yeah, literally. I'm literally that guy that's carrying everything whilst my girlfriend walks around, grabbing everything, put it in the thing. And I'm just standing there looking around, like, <laughs> I'm trying to get on my phone every time I can get a minute. Yeah, I literally, I do the, I do the daily shop. No, I, and it's like I could I go, yeah, I, could I just go in the supermarket around here that no one else goes to because you yeah. say it's too expensive. So I go in there knowing <laughs> that no one else is there and it costs me about a pound more. I'm like, I'll, I'll, I'll suck that up. Because it's loads of parking and it's like you're straight in and out. And I'm literally in there for about less than 10 minutes. Yeah. And I come back, in I come back with like three bags and I'm done. 10 minutes in and I'm done. Right round, back out. The last person I want to go shopping with, there with his mum. Oh man, she stares at She, she grabs she something. Go, no, she she grabs no a matter what she wants, she'll go up and down every, every aisle. single yeah. aisle. She goes down the pet food aisle. We haven't got any pets. <laughs> I'm like, what are you going down the aisle for? I'm just wait, making my way around and I'm like, oh, I'm waiting wait in the car. Yeah. But she'll get a bottle off the, cat, oh, off the shelf. And, and she'll look at it, and, she'll, and she'll shake it. <laughs> she'll shake the bottle, and then she'll stare at the the the, the, the cat. The, and it's all the same bottles. And, do you, and then she'll pick up another bottle. And that's I'm like, the exact same what bottle. I mean, <laughs> put it in the car and let's go. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't show. No, that. I've I've realised I can't now. To me, but coming from the US, I think I'm just used to one person going because either one person in the relationship more takes on the role of going grocery shopping, or even if both people could go it wouldn't be very efficient or productive for two people to go and one person can go. So I've thought that it's very adorable to see couples shopping together. And it's like, really it's, it's, it's a shock shops. for me that she thought of that, to be honest. It's probably the cause of divorce for many couples. <laughs> yeah. Spare wheel at a shop, forget it. Shopping together, I wouldn't have thought that's the thing that no, you the last thing I want to do. Work, you know, they're checking out the food, they're reading the labels, checking the prices. <laughs> And I don't think you've ever checked the price or read a label. To buy together, and it's like a family affair. And for some reason, that's weird to me. But if you're from England, you probably think that's normal. The recycling oh, is also really impressive here. I've gotten so used to composting that I don't know how I'm going to go back to normal life in the U.S. without it, or anywhere in the world for that matter. There's not that many countries that have this level of composting and recycling, but I think most of them are probably in Europe. But I have five different recycling bins at my house and in the US we have one and like most of that's not actually recycled. So here in my neighborhood, they recycle around 70 to 80% of all of the trash. Whereas in the US, the national average is more like 32%. And that includes a lot of trash that's not actually recycled, like trash that they burn or trash that's collected at construction sites and things like that. So. I don't know. I, I wish that more countries would invest in greener ways uh, to reduce waste. And it's just been really impressive here how they do things. A lot of things just seem to make logical sense here. Maybe it's that British sensibility, but even things I noticed like going to the airport where in the US it's kind of a free for all with cars blocking each other and people trying to get out on the streets. Whereas here they just have these little diagonal parking places where everyone can park and drop off people and then be on their way without blocking the road. Well, that's at least at Manchester Airport is quite like in the car parking wise and getting people in. It's quite it's like, one way in, one way out. It's like a drop off zone. Yeah. You have to pay. You have to pay a fortune for it. Yeah. Well, saying a fortune, it's like fifteen quid for three minutes. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's expensive. Like the taxi drivers get like a pass though. No, they they they've got to pay it. So that, why would they take me from my house? put it on the fair. It's on the fair. They add it to the fair. If they're dropping you off in the in the parking zone, it's the fair. They put it on top. Really? Mm. Yeah. They didn't say that last yeah, time. Yeah, you do. They, they might get subsidized. They might get it subsidized a little bit, but I don't think they do. I've heard Uber complaining about but it. But I get like in taxis when I go out the taxi when I go out the airport and they put a little pass against the thing in the barrier. Is, it, is that the black taxi? That's a black taxi. Yeah, they've got the pass. Yeah. Black taxi's loud in there because that's the taxi rank. But they can't drop off it. Wait, if you're dropping off, even in a black taxi, you still got to pay the fee. And they'll add it to your bill. I didn't know mm. that. Yep. So I don't know why <laughs> in the US we haven't done anything like that. Maybe it's for security reasons. But if you've ever been to LAX or New York or Miami International or really like any major airport, you know what I'm talking about. And I was shocked the first time I got to Manchester and I saw people just leisurely parking in front for a minute, dropping off their guests, and then being on their way with no stress. 
They also have a lot of common sense signage around, whether it's road signs <laughs> or ads that you'll see on a bus stop Danger or on the side of the road or a sign that someone put on the bathroom door or something that's broken. It's kind of like, it seems like the <clears throat> signage is here is just kind of talking to you matter of factly, or if it's something like from the NHS, from the National Health Service, It'll be just, you know, some practical information that you might want to know. And there's some way that they go about writing the signs where you just feel like it's very direct versus in the U.S. everything seems like it's marketing to you. One thing that I'm definitely still getting used to is walking or biking on the left side of the road. I just feel a little disoriented all the time and I feel like I look back and forth like 10 times before I cross the street. Just to be clear and on something even there. Just to be clear on something there, you don't have to walk on the left side of the road. Yeah, yeah, no. You can walk on either side yeah. of the pavement. But if you're like walking, like, if people are walking this way and people are walking that way, it's usually like you'd go on the left side. And you yeah. just, just so it's not like, otherwise, because that, otherwise that just starts making people walking into each other, stepping side to side. But, you know I've, never I mean? not, I've never done that in my life. I didn't even know that was a thing. It's not really, a, it's not like a rule, but like you do it because it makes sense. For yeah, keep, I know what you're like, saying. Keep traffic flowing. And but unless you're, you're saying, when, when you're crossing the road, obviously you've got to look to the right yeah. first and then, you know. And then whichever way, well, yeah, you don't have to walk on the. the you don't have to walk on the side. left side of the road. No. Your bike brakes are on opposite sides of the bike, so I learned that really quickly. The back brake and the front <laughs> brake the are reversed, <laughs> so very good to know. I'm also still working out Fahrenheit to Celsius conversions in my head. I think Fahrenheit makes sense, but my friend says it's confusing. He probably has a point. How does Celsius not make the most sense? It doesn't really matter, does it? You just convert it. But because, on like, you. freezing is below zero and then anything above zero is... Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It just makes so much sense. Yeah. I guess it is more straightforward in Celsius because zero is freezing and 32 is hot, whereas in Fahrenheit, 32 is freezing and zero is more freezing more and freezing. 80 or 100 is hot. So, you be the judge. I'm also getting used to the lack of climate control around here, which is pretty strange for someone from the U.S., especially Florida. Fortunately, there is heating in most buildings, but what you won't find is air conditioning. Maybe in some of the big office buildings and some of the more modern buildings, but not in most houses and not in most stores and even small hotels or large hotels. So that's definitely taken some getting used to. Even the big department stores like Zara won't have air conditioning. So it's a bit weird for an American like me, but um, I'm adapting. The scary thing is that people didn't need air conditioning here for most of history, but it seems that things are getting a lot hotter these days. So even though people are definitely enjoying the sunny and warm weather, it's it's a bit scary to think of like how warm it actually is in Europe these days. But what's probably shocked me the most is the price of housing here. Now I know that London is expensive, but I didn't expect the market to be so competitive in Manchester. I've heard that it could be because a lot of people are moving out of London to Manchester in search of cheaper housing, so maybe that's putting some upward pressure on the prices. But also it seems like the UK is in a housing crisis in general in most of the country, and this has to do with a lot of reasons from a lack of building houses to general inflation, population growth, and just higher demand. But I was so surprised at how competitive it was here, even to the point that if you go to an open house, there could be 30 other people competing with you for the same property. And that's something that you would see in New York or LA. I didn't expect that here and the prices were really high, the, the market's super competitive, and it might even be that the landlords and the rental agencies don't even reply to your inquiries, which is just crazy. But I mean, Manchester is the second biggest city in the UK, so there's a lot of people here. Ooh, Ooh debatable. Is it? Yeah. Well, you you say ask, it is in England. If you, ask, if you ask someone from London what the biggest city is in the UK, or you ask someone from London what the big, second biggest city is in the UK, and they'll say Birmingham. If you have someone from Birmingham, what the second biggest city in the UK is, they'll say Birmingham. If you have someone from Manchester, what the second biggest in the UK city in the UK is, they'll 
we'll say London because we're the biggest city in the UK. <laughs> no, but even <laughs> so, she said that. Would you not say like Birmingham? Like, no. What about like Glasgow or Edinburgh? Well, Birmingham. They say Birmingham is the. It's called the second city. But I thought that was Isn't England's. Um, well, the UK's. I don't know. It's, Scotland doesn't have a massive population, mate. Yeah, I know. Mm. You would have thought if the, the, all, most of the population is in Birmingham. I think Birmingham is still bigger than Edinburgh and Glasgow. I think yeah, Manchester yeah. is as well, yeah. Mm. Greater Manchester's got a lot bigger since it became Greater Manchester. Yeah. And it's expanding, you know, taking places like Wigan and places like that. But um, I'm not sure if it's the second biggest in the, in the UK. Well, I think it's the biggest. <laughs> Manchester. Man, we don't want people from London moving up here neither. No, yeah. And plus, we do, have there, we do have a lot of air conditioning, to be fair. It's, it's got a lot better than what it used to be. I don't know how, old, when, how long ago she did this video, but, yeah. but we've got air conditioning at home and in the offices. Yeah, we do. So. We're looking for housing. They are newer builds, though. That is a yeah. problem that I definitely didn't anticipate to the degree that it is here. But anyway, what shocked you the most when you came to the UK? Or are you a local and you can help me make some sense of these cultural differences? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new here and click. Yeah, yeah she yeah, did a good video. Local, nice mate. video. It was a nice video. Yeah, she was yeah. nice. It's, uh, she did a good job there. Because I think what she's saying there about the, the culture shocks were all kind of valid. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you know, I'm not out to criticize and say and pinpoint and say, well, Manchester's not and, and do that because I'm not sure if it is the second biggest or not. I do think it's the first. It's <laughs> no, certainly it's, the best. Realistically, it's not the first biggest. It's the best. London's look, it's yeah, the yeah, best. Yeah, yeah. It's by far London's the best. hundred percent the biggest. It's like yeah. double the size of any other city. If someone said to me, "If I'm coming to I'm coming to England, where should I go and visit Manchester?" I would definitely say visit Manchester, visit Liverpool, and visit Leeds. I wouldn't say visit Liverpool. Oh, I would. Liverpool, brilliant city. It's all right. Ah, oh, it's mint Liverpool. It's like you walk, you take one turn, and you're on an absolute. Yeah, dump the road. Yeah, you're yeah. right. But if you stay around Liverpool, one on the on the docks and places like just yeah, around nice. Liverpool Central, yeah. it's nice. It's you only twenty minutes. Like, go, you can be you can be in Liverpool in twenty minutes on the train from Manchester. Yeah, true. So you know, you say you can yeah, if Liverpool, you go into Manchester Liverpool for a nice like, because the only times I've been to go into my mates' uni accommodation and go yeah, and night out, and yeah. <laughs> go to yeah, go into yeah. Anfield or yeah. Goodison Park. But uh, yeah. I would uh, I would say Birmingham's a nice city as well. Birmingham, but it's getting in and out of Birmingham. Does you nothing? Well, you went to school there, so. But it's um, I definitely um, I definitely go the north over the south 100%. any day of the week. Uh, any day, yeah. But if you're going for a holiday, or, go, or if you want to go to like a, a quiet night, go to like York. York's beautiful, very historical. But then again, if you want a beachy type uh, place to go, then Cornwall, Devon, around yeah. that area, that's beautiful. But that's in the Can south. You even go to the north of Wales. But you go, yeah, well, I wouldn't. <laughs> Don't go the north of Wales. <laughs> Do not do that. Why not? <laughs> you're you're right, right, you go, why did you go to like landed and stuff? I've never even been to be fair. It's bad, mate. Yeah, you don't want to go there. But anyway, how was I enjoyed that video? Yeah, cool, especially well. when she was in Manchester, yeah. that's it's even interesting better. Interesting to see what she has to say. Yeah, nice. There you go. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.